People with narcissistic personality disorder are in love with an idealized, grandiose image of themselves. And they're in love with this inflated self-image precisely because it allows them to avoid deep feelings of insecurity. But propping up their delusions of grandeur takes a lot of work, and that's where the dysfunctional attitudes and behaviors come in. Uh, well, uh, you shouldn't be grinding on anybody anyway. You're married. And I'm not there, so you shouldn't be grinding any on anybody, right? Yeah. Okay, and don't just say right just to make me happy. Say right because you don't want to grind on anybody but me. Please. Yeah, I know. Just not being able to say no is bullshit. So what? They yeah, tricked you. Right. Fuck them. They're assholes. They tricked you, okay? doesn't have anything to do with you pointing your cam to your penis for a little girl. Winning. 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 Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Tell Dan Debbie's phone number in English. Okay. I'm typing on Facebook an open invitation for a party, like my sister said. Oh. An open invitation to, to a party. So in other words, give me all kinds of guys there. I saw it. You just got your fucking game winning! Please help me, please help me. And you tell him so that he can understand you! Okay. I'm sorry, Dad! <laughs> Who are you talking to? You! Well, don't call me bitch. You're so needy. I just want to hear your voice. Do people ever recognize you from the show? No, they don't. They don't say anything. Do you ever see women like pull their children to their knees or to their waste so that you don't look at them? Uh, no. no. Why would you ask me this shit? Very seldom do you run across rude people. And I've got good neighbors. Do they know what your dick looks like? Hell if I know. They know I'm on the registry because they have to put a poster up down the town office. But no way of says anything to me. Because of their inability to understand feelings, their lack of empathy, and their constant need for self-protection, narcissists can't truly love or connect emotionally with other people. They can't look at the world from anyone else's perspective. This makes them emotionally needy. When one relationship is no longer satisfying, they often overlap relationships or start a new one as soon as possible. They desperately want someone to feel their pain, to empathize with them, and to make everything just as they want it to be. It's a form of codependency, except they have little ability to respond to your pain or fear, or even your day-to-day -day need for care and sympathy. Don't expect the narcissist to understand your feelings, give in, or give up anything they want for your benefit. It's useless. No, was it you that told me that there's, there's one female sex offender in, in this town? Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, she's a piece of work that kind. <laughs> What'd she do? She met a little girl off of Yahoo and then drove across state lines to try to fuck her. met a little girl off of Yahoo and go across, across the table and try to fuck her. Yeah. Well, she went with her boyfriend, but she was a, an accessory. Oh. That was fucked up. Oh, you thought... No, I wasn't trying to make a joke about you. It was an, it was a sting. Well, I, I thought you were saying that, that she herself went by herself. No, it's because her boyfriend um, made her come along and um, it was understood that she was gonna like 
because they had text messages between them too that she was going to try to make the girl comfortable and suggest that they'd get alcohol and everything and try to get her knocked out. And um, wow. they brought like a camera. Um, oh, that's right. And sex toys. Wow. That is fucked up. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna run and get ready, because it normally may not take me, um, like, four hours after you get here to be ready. <laughs> after um, I get there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. But I'm gonna let you go, and I'll, I'll try to be ready when you get here, okay? Okay, and what are you gonna be wearing? <laughs> what am I gonna, what do you want me to be wearing? <laughs> I just want to hear you say what you're gonna be wearing. Um... <laughs> Well, you know what color panties I'm going to be wearing, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, none. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Okay, thank you. That is fucked up. But see, he didn't get in trouble. She did. Because... Why didn't he... Why didn't he get in trouble? Because he was 18 and the girl was 15. And that's only three years apart, oh, but she yeah, was 20, she, she was yeah. 24, and... Yeah, it's going to be five years. And she was the one who was suggesting all of the different ways that they could uh, compromise her ability to consent, if you will. Wow. That is fucked up. That is royally fucked up. You, you and many other guys spent months, weeks, whatever, on the internet trying to groom a child so that you could show up at, at, at some random person's house who has a child who's left alone and stick your dick in them and ruin their lives. That's what you guys had every intention of doing. That's what you guys did. You guys followed through. Oh, my God. And yeah. now you're going to say that that show shouldn't be made public. That show shouldn't be shown all around the world because you guys were embarrassed? Really? Listen to me. I never wanted to fucking go there. Why are you not hearing that? I, 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 I'm really not hearing that because I'm hearing... A I do a don't chat room. Lord. I wasn't looking for a minor. Lord. If I go into a 21-year-old... I want to stop talking about this tonight, Ramona. I want to stop talking about tonight. It's just Lord. irritating me more and more. Lord, you're irritating me because you won't take responsibility for things that you do. I take do. responsibility for what I did. You are not... I'm going to every fucking day. Lord, I don't you, stop thinking about it. Lord, you don't stop thinking about how it fucked your life up. That's what you think about. You don't think about how you almost screwed somebody else's life up. Had you not have gotten caught, you would be dancing, skipping along merrily on your merry way. While there would be a girl who didn't yeah. do anything, she would be in a prison right now. She would be in a psychological and emotional prison because of your actions. I want to talk with you seriously about something, and it may seem like an attack, but all I'm asking for you to do is hear me out and ask yourself how you would feel in my shoes. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Call me yes, baby. I'm your wife. I'm not trying to talk down to you right now. Yes, baby. My wife. Baby. When I told you secrets about myself, you shared them with most people. Don't, and don't say anything. You did. And when I asked you not to say Seth about Seth to Emma, you did. Roy tells you things I shouldn't know and you share it with me. I understand. You share different things with different people, I guess, like most people do. You don't have respect for the law enough to refrain from drinking. And I understand, it's stupid. You don't have a drinking problem, okay? But, okay, whatever. You make an exception for that because you're not hurting anybody. 
and sometimes you speed. We make an exception for that because it's safe. And I'm agreeing with you again. I'm not saying that, you know, it's that's bullshit. <laughs> but when it comes to helping your wife understand about something that affected her as a survivor of sexual abuse and also somebody who needs to know about the place she's going to live in in the future. Why can't you make exceptions to share things with me that don't have anything to do with their personal information, but you're sharing mine and compromising the law in all these other ways because you just see fit to do it? Why don't you love me enough to do that? I do love you enough, honey. Yeah. <laughs> when you when you told me that stuff about you, it, it was easy. It was easy for me to talk to Emma because Emma was there with you, and you were friends with Emma. And and I needed. I knew you needed more than me to talk to about it. And I knew that Emma was the perfect one for you to talk to about it because Emma had talked to me about my stuff. That's why I told that one. Did you know that there's an assumption I, I'm i not sure about, but because I watch um, Forensic Files, by, by um, like the courts in um, our United States, that husbands and wives are going to share information, and that's why you can't force a spouse to testify in other things. Uh, against their other spouse because they don't want to incriminate them and also people who hold professional licenses do that with their spouses and it's already assumed Then we're married and I'm not even asking for names or descriptions I just wanted to know like if there are younger people who do that kind of stuff if we have a baby I need to know I need to look for like, I need to look for patterns for profiling to keep people safe. What, what people are you talking about? People in my class? Oh, fuck them. I did not get my tube signed. I'm as fertile as a fucking field that's never been planted with pumpkins or watermelons or anything else Mexicans they got. Okay, so if what I are you have asking a baby, me though? If I have a baby, it makes me feel better to know kind of what to look out for. And if these people are sharing their innermost thoughts with you, and it's something that I can use to protect our family, and you decide to keep it from me, if something happens, you're going to have to fucking have that on your shoulders. Well, no. And, uh, I'm, not, I'm not around people from that class. I don't go near people in, in the class at all. It's part of their therapeutic post-imprisonment treatment, I their correctional treatment, to have this as a therapeutic class and group. It is a therapeutic yeah. group. And they're sharing their thoughts. I want to know. what Should... If it's hot, okay. should I put pants on our daughter just so sh they don't look at her and rub their cocks? You would know that because they no. share it in class and you're not sharing it with me and you're siding with them. You respect the sex offender. I'm not siding with them. private information. Listen, you're getting wound up. Calm down. Calm down. You're getting wound up about something you don't know anything about yet. You don't know what I know. You know, listen to what I'm saying. If you and I have a baby, you're gonna have to take a class because where you will be, you and the baby will be living with me. You're gonna learn a lot in that class about what to look for. You see what I'm saying? That, that way, you and the baby are protected. I will never be alone with our baby. Ever. Either you will be here, or mom will, or another adult. But the baby will always be with you. 
unless we go out, then we'll have them. That's just a lorry babysit. Hi, Casey. This is a video of me. She's the one I, I trust with babies more than anyone, except for mom. But mom's getting older, so it would be Lori. Yeah, well, you didn't tell Ralph and Lori that they're not the fucking steal off their other youngest brother. What's that got to do with you now? You stupid enough to do it. You can't blame somebody else. That's the whole reason, Mom. That's the whole reason I need to left me to begin with. It was always trying to help them. I know. Every, everything is my fault. Nothing's Ralph and Lori's fault. He was trying to buy their love. Well, you can't. Oh, bullshit. That's what Lori told you. That fucking bitch is a piece of shit. Why do you let us see that, Mom? That's like that girl. You were trying to buy her love and you lose your money on her. You don't, you don't buy love. You earn it. Oh, really? Yeah. So over fucking 30 years, I didn't earn Ralph and Lori's love. They had to fucking steal money off me. Okay, I ain't gonna argue about no that because it don't matter. Right, because we're talking about Ralph and Lori. So I'm gonna get off the phone and... God forbid, the two older, the two oldest kids never fucking do anything wrong there. They're pieces of shit. They're fucking worthless. It's like, you know, you live in the past all the time. You don't uh, know. Yeah. But they live so much in the future. Living in the past. They can't, because they can't stand their past. Like what I, they've done to people. I could live in the past. I could blame your father. I could blame Dale. You don't worry, can't. I don't live in the past. Ralph and Lori can't live in the past because Ralph and Lori abused too many people. Okay, if you want to talk to me, you better come over here because I ain't going to... Well, I'm sorry. I, I love you to death, Mom, but you got to realize Ralph and Lori are not angels. They're pieces well, I'm of shit. Not angels. I don't see Ralph, Ralph and Lori. Ralph and Lori are exactly like your ex-husband. They're not understanding. Just those two. What am I not understanding? I need to know what these pigs think. Okay. Most of them, most of them that are in there are actually trying very hard. The, there's some in there that I questioned that that bothered me quite a bit, but they don't live in in our area, in my area. So if there's ever the 10 mile yard sale or a county fair and you see them, you better grab me by your arm and my arm and pull me close. You can't keep that information from oh, me. Oh, I will. Just so you can tell you I travel in the court. I won't. I won't keep that information from you on the autonomous. That's something I will not keep from you. Regardless of if, if I violate any thing from the class, your safety and our baby's safety comes first. I don't have a choice in that. You're my wife now, so that definitely comes first. Okay. All I'm getting from you is politician word salad. What do these guys think when they see Uncle Kid? <laughs> what do these guys think? Some, some of them have unpleasant thoughts. Are they there because they molested family or because, like, they looked at pictures? Some of them molested families. Some of them look at that child born. There's, there's such a there's such a range of things that that they did. This is for all the know it alls that think they already know everything about everything that happened in this thing that I was in. They uh, when they did the interview with me in, in the interrogation room. See, this is about the search of my truck. Search of my truck. They already did the search of my truck at the sting house without my consent. Then they, and they brought me to the, the interrogation room because they, they searched my truck 
while they were bringing up and me up the interrogation room at the sheriff's department. So I wasn't didn't wasn't even aware that they were doing the search of my truck. But after the interrogating, they had uh, they had driven my truck. They weren't supposed to be driving my truck. They were supposed to have a wrecker take my truck to the sheriff station. But they drove my truck to the to the sheriff station. Then they after they, after they get done interrogating me, they brought me out to my truck. And they did uh, this pretend search all over again. The search that they had already done, they did it all over again. With the camera crew there and on, my, on my truck, on the search of my truck. And they had me standing over next to the sheriff that arrested me with another camera crew right there. And when I was standing next to the sheriff and the camera crew come over and he started getting in my face. So I got behind the sheriff. And the camera crew directed the sheriff to stand me next to him. So it's like the sheriff was standing here and I was standing here and his camera crew was right here in front of me getting in my face. And what they were doing was trying to make me react to, um, to them being assholes. So and I was moving my head every which way like this and this and every way I possibly could with my hands behind my back trying to get away from them. Even going to the point, right one down, just like this, my head between my legs, and the camera from the camera guy come right around the back of my legs, with the camera right on my legs or hitting my nose. And that's when they stopped filming me so hard. I stood back up and I just I just resolved to give it in, just stand there, let them film me. Because what they were trying to do is they wanted to get a reaction out of me, so that they could put it on the show. Because they wanted something good to put on the show. So if I would have given them a reaction, they, they would have edited out everything else that would have happened. So you never would have seen that either. The only thing you would have seen would be me reacting and them uh, turn, uh, putting me on the ground. Because the camera crew would be aggravating me. It was all a setup. It was all a show. So I'm sorry for all you know-it-all people that and think you know everything about everything that has to do with that show. But that's what it was, it was a staged show. Regardless if you want to admit it or not, it's a staged show. Do you really think you should be in the same class with people who have violently raped their family members? No, I've hired started calling to you once because of the shit that I hear in that class. It, it bothers me. I honestly... I honestly believe that even though you feed off of drama and you provoke people to feel sad so that they will coddle you and give you positive reinforcement about your feelings or whatever, I don't see you as somebody who gets off on the pain of somebody else. I don't think you would tie somebody to the bed and love to hear her scream because you hurt her. I think there's some part of you that no. wants to hurt you with your cock and you get off on that. But. I don't think you would throw a family member down and violently rape her and then like threaten her and, and all that bullshit. A part of it is probably because you're a little bit coward. And another part is it takes a special kind of a fucked up person to do that. And how do you feel sitting with people who are just fucking like that? Don't you feel scared for yourself? It means they don't even have regard for anybody. I'm bothered by it. I'm bothered by being in that glass. Still. That's why I'm, I'm trying so hard to uh, do the work that I have to do so I can get the fuck out of that glass. It pisses me off so bad being in that glass because I've already done four and a half years with one class. And they take me turn around and fucking throw me in this goddamn glass. Well, this is beyond you. Because quite frankly... But I can't do anything about it. You should know why they've kept you in and you haven't passed. Lauren, the guy Bald Beaver Hunter who was busted with you, he had child porn, little 11 year old, little baby girls. And I'm not saying that like quoting the thing. These precious little children engaged in very explicit activity and that man is completely, all he has to do 
is register. He's on probation, no treatment, no nothing like that. And all he did was fucking play by the rules and he wanted to do it and then went through it. And he did the same thing. Why are you still in your class? Why do they feel you still need this treatment? Those bad, bad men are done with theirs already. That's something that scares me about you, baby. What scares you? What's scaring you? Did I get put in, did I get a different probation officer that turned all the rules around on me again? But you are probably the only one. Other people who have, other people who are more violent and successful in their attempts at <laughs> offenses have been through and been dismissed from that. So a governmental agency still recognizes you as a threat without proper treatment. And I gotta know why, baby. I deserve to know why, don't you? Well, baby, the reason, the reason I'm still in it is because I've, I've been almost two years still trying to fight my case. Still trying to get something different to happen in my case because I knew I was railroaded. Because the more you fight, the less remorse you show. And you know that. Yeah. And you're not playing by the rules. You keep fighting it. Yeah, yeah. And that's what makes you dangerous because you don't recognize that it was it was real and you meant to do it. Um, I'm, 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 it. Playing, I'm playing by their rules now. They finally get their fucking way and I'm playing by their rules. I'm doing everything well, that I you, need to do. Are you admitting that there was some type of intent and that you feel bad for that now? And even though... Yeah, yeah. Yes, I do. I've, then when is he going to let you finish? When's it over? You know, so when I'm done with this this class, this, these exercises that I have to do. But I thought I've been doing them. I've been I doing them every week. Center. I've already done. I've already done this whole book. In the other class that I took, I've already done the whole book. I know you told me that. Around and, me. and you told me that one time that you went and they told you you were going through the book too fast. So it's not an activity centered yeah. treatment termination plan. That's not what determines it. It's a year long class. So when did you start? I started after I got out, like a month after, a month or two after I get out of prison. This last, okay, this class that started right now, you have to be this in this class started right now. I think I've only been in this one for like six months, I think. I don't, I don't remember when it was I started. I think it's only been like six months. Why don't you go look at your clipboard? Yeah, it might not be the now. I don't know if I have that on there or not. I might have that in there. I'm sorry, this is interesting to me. Well, there's a lot more to it than what, than what you see, but you have to be able to let me explain to you why I'm still in the class without interrupting me and getting me on a different subject. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to get 11, you 10, the 17. I'm just... 11, 10, 17. So you should be done in two months. If they don't let you be done, tell them you want very specific baby. treatment goals so you can meet them. Baby, you... Baby, you want me, you know what the problem is? This guy doesn't let me do my exercises when I have my exercises done. He doesn't want me to do my exercises. He doesn't want anybody to do their exercises or or read their exercises of what they've done unless until he calls on them. You look like um that guy, Matthew Broderick. Uh, I've heard that before. You do. I've heard that before. I've heard I look like Justin Timberlake before. Like, hell, hell, I thought I look, just looked like myself. Narcissistic personality disorder involves a pattern of self-centered, arrogant thinking and behavior, a lack of empathy and consideration for other people, and an excessive need for admiration. Others often describe people with NPD as cocky, manipulative, selfish, patronizing, and demanding. This way of thinking and behaving surfaces in every area of the narcissist's life, from work and friendships to family and love relationships. Their tendency is to turn the blame onto others, 
What's more, they are extremely sensitive and react badly to even the slightest criticisms, disagreements, or perceived slights, which they view as personal attacks. Labor Day weekend, we didn't have class that Monday. It was the week before that. I had an exercise done. I asked him, and, and he, he wanted to go over the, we spent the whole fucking class going over the same fucking contract that we signed. I know. Uh... The whole, wasted a whole fucking class going over a contract that we had already signed, already read. You know, the, the, he, had, he had us read the whole fucking thing all over again. But, uh, that's just fucking bullshit. Then we still had 20 minutes left. Uh, I could have read the exercise that I had ready. And if anything was if anything was wrong with it, then I could have spent it. In that two weeks that we had with no class, I could have I could have done more on that. I could have redone it and then presented it again last week. But he didn't. I asked him if I could present it. He said no. Uh, I was pissed when I walked out. He knew I was fucking pissed. That's why he let me present it this last week. It's this area here that takes up so much time because it's not just me that has to do all this stuff. It's other people too. But most of the other guys don't have their stuff ready when he calls on them. But we have to wait until he calls on us. You see, in the other class, they took it for four and a half years. You got me on speaker? No, I put my earbuds in so I could hear you. Okay. Ugh, sorry. The other class, the other class that I had for four and a half years, when I first started that, I wasn't going to do anything until I had heard back from the, the court. So I wasn't going to start on, you know, any exercise in the book and, uh, you know, and wind up making things worse for me because that's what my lawyer told me, don't, don't do anything that's going to make things worse for you. I didn't decide in the book for quite a while because it took quite a while to hear back from the court. But then when I heard back from the court, my motion got denied. I started in the, in on the book. I started going fast. Mitch wanted me to slow down. It was like a year later, not even a year later, Mitch wanted me to slow down because he thought I was going too fast. So I spent two years slowing down. Then I was like, it's like this, I've slowed down long enough. I spent the next year and a half getting the book done. Then I wind up, then, then they didn't, she didn't want me, she didn't want to let me out of the class because of the fact she wanted to see me in a face-to-face -face relationship. So she wouldn't sign off on me because of that. Then I was going down to see Allie, my therapist. And Allie was helping me a lot. She was the only one that I trusted. But Maria took me and told Allie that she wanted Allie to let me go, just to release me. Allie didn't think it was a good idea, and I didn't either, because Allie knew that she was the only one that I trusted. And I didn't know Maria for very long at all when she did that. And it's mostly, most of it wasn't even Maria, it was Maria's supervisor. I didn't know him very much, very long at all either barely even knew him. Then they go and put me in this class and want me to do the whole thing all over again. So I went and got a lawyer. And I fucking so it's been a few months trying to minute within researching on my whole case and trying to figure out if there was anything that I could do to get out of taking that class all over again. And he told me because of the stuff on the internet, it, it didn't look very good for me to be able to get out of that class. And the best thing for me to do was just go through the class. So that's why I just started going through the class. And now I can't present my stuff unless he calls on me. So this is why this shit has taken so long. I understand. Frustrating as all of me is I can have to go down there every every week and be around them. Some of people that are in there is very hard to hear some of the shit that is being said there. 
and you go into that class is it, it's very hard for me to, I've wanted to walk out there's, there's been there's a few of us in there that have wanted to walk out with a couple, a couple of the guys and the things that they say another reason I wanted to make this video was to apologize to the world for what a, for the conversation that I had with what I thought was a 13 year old girl um, and for showing myself naked to her own webcam and for going to the sting house um, and uh, another reason I want to make this video the third reason I want to make this video is to tell anybody that is abusing a minor to leave them alone they, are not, they were not put on this world for you to abuse that it's an incredible violation to them it's very hurtful and it's something that they have to live with forever and you wouldn't like it if somebody had done that to you when you was a kid um, whatever you do it, whatever you do whatever you need to do go get help uh, see a counselor a therapist whatever you need to do but stop abusing a minor any minor that is getting abused don't be afraid to tell somebody about it you've got the whole world behind you it, it, don't be afraid of that person that is abusing you because once that person uh, once it's found out that that person is abusing you the world would be right behind you to make sure that they're not around you again um, I also want to thank everybody for all the support that they have given me and um, it, it's really just incredible it's amazing it, it really leaves me completely speechless at the turnaround and uh, all the support that all of you have given me it, it's you are just really great and and uh, I really don't know what how to how to go about expressing myself with that because I'm, I'm just completely amazed by it all um, I, I guarantee I will never do anything to disappoint you again um, I, I have quit smoking again. It's, I'm going to fumble a couple of times, but it's it's a very hard thing to do. And but I'm, I may fumble a couple of times and, and smoke a little bit, but it's until uh, I can quit completely, which I'm going to try not to fumble. But I, I know it may happen because the, the nicotine withdrawal is a terrible thing. Um, I guess that's all I want to say for now. I, once again, I just really want to thank all of you for all your support. And it's, it's, it's just, just incredible. All of you are really great. And thank you very much. Yeah. And it, it, make, it, it makes me fucking sick. Like and if you saw, go that class. what if we took our little girl to a water park and you saw a man sitting on a bench with his hand in his pocket looking at her, like moving his hand in his trunks, what would your reaction be? I'd go over and knock his fucking ass out. So I'm going to turn your fucking head the other way and stop looking at my little girl. You feel outraged, right? But what if it wasn't our little girl? What if we were just at the, the yard sale and some guy was looking at a little girl and you, he had that look in his eye and he was part of your class what would be your obligation i'd go over and say something to him and i'd say and i'd tell him in class too would that be your I'm obligation or class. would it just be something that you know is the right thing be, to do that would be that would be both the right thing to do and and i'd be obligated to do it okay I'd so have like to do it because of the fact he knew, don't mean that he's, he's a threat. So, like, is it part of your agreement with, in your class? Like, let's say that you're just at a store, you're buying a soda, and you see somebody in your class with a girl who's obviously underage, and they're, like, hugged up with each other at the liquor store or whatever, and then you see them share an intimate kiss in the car on your way out. Is there a rule in your class for you to have to bring that up to the teacher and say, look, I saw this man with an underage girl? Yeah. We were all we get to say. Whatever guy would do that, that is in the class, 
he's obligated to tell about it. Um, but that person that did that was, uh, was also 10 years ago and he's gone. It's not, it's not the me that I am now. And um, the me that I am now, all I care about is doing, doing is good things. And <laughs> well, you know, if I start running, you trip me, then I turn on, I turn around, and all of a sudden you're right there on top of me. All you have to do is, is sit down. Even the ones that have made bad comments towards me has helped because it's made me take a step back and look a little harder so I could see you know, some things that they were seeing that I wasn't really paying a lot of attention to um, because of being so mad about legalities and all that stuff and when, when it really comes right down to it the legalities is not what the big issue was. The big issue is is what I did and the things I that I said. Um, but like I said, that person was ten years ago. It's it's not the person now. Oh, what if we play another game? Oh, like what? Monopoly. What if what if I, I stand up straight and you take it? Bounce my cock and close your eyes. You tell me when it stops, and I'll tell you if you're right. It, well, it wasn't until after I got out of incarceration, and actually about it was about a year and a half after I got out of out of incarceration and was in this class that I take, and was seeing a therapist, and was talking to my probation officer that I actually. It was them that that realized that what my problem was was I couldn't say no. You want to feel my cock between your legs, huh? Yeah, I do, Daddy. Where do you want to feel it? Where do I want to feel it? Now, where do you want to feel it? Um, well... I'll open my legs, and you can put it in if you want. Oh, okay. No, of course. I didn't know. I got confused. I didn't know if you wanted to feel it between your feet, between your knees. I was not in my, in my right frame of mind back then. I had a lot of things that happened to me. I was messed up. And even in the conversation, I said I was confused. And even in the conversation, I said I was confused. I didn't know. I got confused. I didn't know if you wanted to feel it between your feet, between your knees. I wanted to apologize to everyone for my involvement in the sting. Um, I didn't, the things I said and did was was wrong and terrible, and I feel really bad about all of that. Um, I guarantee it'll never happen again. I'll bend over a lot and pretend to clean up, but it'll just be so you can see my pussy. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, if, if you show it to me too much, I might have to come up behind and I might have to slide my cock into it. Uh-oh, Daddy, you're going to be naughty, uh, but I won't stop uh, you. Oh. <laughs> you don't want me to be naughty? I, I'll pretend I don't, but I really will, though. <laughs> 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 You're naughty too. I'll say, oh my goodness, what a surprise. And then you'll grab me by my hips and you'll say, I have another surprise for you, my baby. And I'll feel you slide into me. <laughs> I like thinking of that. <laughs> me too. That's a good thing to think of, honey. And that's a really good thing to think of. There's things I can't, or that I won't go into detail on, um, with the exception of Drango Mango. She deserves an, an explanation from me and and to know what was going on. And, and it, it's, 
it's difficult when you want to do things for, for people to, to have to say no. <clears throat> or well, it was difficult for me because I, I just like doing things for people. And there's a situation with, with Betty that's what happened was I, I couldn't say no. Well, Betty seems to like to add dirty laundry all over the internet. And she can't seem to get away from it. So I've blocked her from my channel because I'm tired of listening to her crap, reading her crap. So, she seems to think that I'm not going to pay her back. I've already paid her back $80, and I've had to take a break from sending her any money because I ran into issues myself. Those issues are almost done. Now I will start paying Betty money again. Won't be this week, but it'll start next week again. Or this week, it'll start this week if I can squeeze $20 in, or even $5. That way she can stop running her mouth. But this is what I'm going to do. These right here are, are what I've already sent Betty. This was the very first one that I've sent her. I don't know if you can see it or not, but that's forty dollars. I had to write forty dollars up there because you can barely see it on the printed thing. So that was the first one I sent her, and I've sent her two other payments of twenty dollars. I'm gonna pay her back twenty thousand dollars because that's what basically basically what I figure I owe her anyway. Me, you were asking me how much he paid back. Oh, right, in right. Thirteen years. Yes, in thirteen um, years. Get ready for get ready for this total. I think uh, it, I'm going to probably. This is probably generous. I don't know. I think for four hundred dollars. I four, think four hundred dollars. Wow, that is sick. Mm. That's so sad. That that's pathetic. I, and with every and the only reason and the only only reason he ever did was because of people like emma and tiffany and all and ramona and all the ones all the girls that he thought he was going to get laid with he yes he knew that a, he would impress them if he paid me twenty dollars here and there yes and that's why because he didn't start paying back until these phone calls. Um, I guess that's all, all I can say for right now. Thank you for listening. Kayla, I want to be inside you so bad, baby. This is something... Lauren, this is this is something I, I did ten years ago. Okay, but Lauren, I I get that it was I get that this was ten years ago, but it's kind of hard for me. Okay, Lauren, you have to understand something. You have always told me that you didn't want to go to that house. You and have I, always and I still stand by that because I do not I did not want to go there. Okay, you've always told me that you didn't want to go. You have always told me that you were not going to have sex with her. You even told me one time a long time ago that you went because she was home by herself and you were worried about her and you wanted to make sure she was safe. That was the reason that I went, Bill. You went to make sure she was safe, but before you went... Then, then I, I, was all freaked out. I know, I know, I know what I did. I don't need to keep reliving it. Okay, but Lauren, you you might not want to relive it, but I brought you into my world and now I'm living it. What? What? Barry in your world too. He can't what shut up. He's what the heck? He's what the heck? He's probably doing everything to put me down. What does Barry have to do with this? You and I agreed a long time ago that we would listen to these things in person when you were here. Lauren, I did not know that they existed. I did not know that you had phone conversations with her. A long time ago, I told you that CD 
said you had, you, you know what, you said you had CDs. You, 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 you said you had CDs. I thought that you had CDs of your interrogation. Yes, I did. Okay, you said you had CDs. I thought that you had CDs of your interrogation. I have no clue. I could not have fathom in a million years that there were phone conversations between you and her. I probably intentionally blocked the phone conversation. Hey, I gotta go. But all about them, I, I'll take him and start going up to get you. Probably intentionally did that. Okay. So you, so you intentionally did that. Well, see, I'm, now I'll be you, I'll, I'll stick right around. Now it's brought back up into your memory. And you don't think I have a right to hear him? Calm your ass down, because that's not going to help. I don't like law enforcement picking on people who don't break any laws that need to be enforced. Okay, listen. Can you tell me what they're saying on, on the internet? Yes. About, please. There is something extremely sad about this. I don't understand any of his jokes. However, this elderly man's English skills are actually incredible. You cannot change your family. What? That was by Meandrus Phoenix. I didn't even understand what he, what he said. I'm not an elderly man, so I don't know who he's talking about. Dear Lauren, in my heart, I've hugged you more than my own father. Yeah. That's deep. And I understand what it is like to be misunderstood. You are a good candidate for an honorary citizen if you just stopped struggling with things you don't want to admit that you might be struggling with you know what i mean friend thank you so much larry sober for 12 years and counting that's nice and he that should know nice. that you are also sober that's right yep. all right you, you don't have to read a bunch of them sweetheart conan o'brien no, says Conan O'Brien says, would love to have you on as a guest when you are out. Had my research team searching and found that you might have an interval of time where you might be free and able to come on to talk about your plight. Perhaps get positive attention. Thank you so much, Conan O'Brien. Wow. Wow, that would be great. He has a big audience, my sweets. Yeah, he does. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Do you guys like ramen? Not me. Lauren likes his men cooked. <laughs> that's not funny. That's, that's, it's that's a joke about top ramen that. because that's what people can purchase in the commissary. Yeah. Well, I don't purchase it. That's back and crap. Yeah, I know. It's like soil and grain. That's people. Yeah. All right. I am from Los Angeles. I feel like I am required by law to marry someone who is 25. However, I'm 58 years old, and I wish that I could date somebody more age-appropriate without society forcing their norms on me, just like they forced them on Lauren Armstrong, which is one of the reasons that he felt compelled to go after somebody younger because society told him that was the norm. Now society is telling him something completely opposite. If we would stop being so hypocritical, good, normal, and decent men like Lauren Armstrong would not be having such a trouble. That sounds supportive. That's uh, supportive. I'm not really sure what he means, but he means um, that um, he means that the media in our country is obsessed with youth, and that was a big drive for you to make your mistake. And if they hadn't done that, and like you know, had an influence on American media and people as a whole by showing them that only young people matter and are desirable, then you would not have had that brainwashed through your brains. Yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> And you have a problem with trying to please people. So all you want to do is, you know, appear positive to other people and you just accept the societal norms and then the norms are changed up. And it's like people are hypocrites. That's what it is. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
Lauren is a good truck driver and upstanding citizen. Pays his taxes, pays his bills. Leave the man alone. I demand this. Cowboy Bebop. Good. He's being he's exploited, isn't he? <laughs> he's demanding it. This is, it started, it's pissing people off. I, I knew it was going to. Of course, because this is an injustice. Of course, it's our own opinion. And who are we to blow against the wind as far as federal is concerned? But when you get your day in court, everything will finally be out on the table and they will see that this is very unfair to you. Well, I was really worried about you when this happened because a lot because. Hello? I know. I'm here. Oh, there you go. Hi. I don't know if you know this, but the phone, maybe it's because they're recording on their line. But when you start to talk quietly, all it sounds is like. Oh, okay. Because they don't want you to relay a secret message or whatever, probably. I read it on the Secura site when I was trying to put money on your books. They have a lot of rules on there about whispering. And if they didn't tell you about it, I'm. Anyway. Okay. Anyway. No, I'm just saying. Remember when I tried to get my refund because they told I know, I know, I know. Listen. I was trying to tell you okay. that I was really wor- I was really worried about you when I got arrested because I know how you freak out and I was worried about you freaking out. And Thank I you for being considerate of, of my feelings. Um, just uh, I, I need, in the future, if this ever happens again in the future, I need you to not freak out, okay? Are you trying to establish I have mental illness because of some things I might have said no. before? Because I also have Tourette's and things come out of my mouth that aren't the truth. I know. Okay, good. I know, but I, I know, I know how you freak out when you get worried about me. So I just want you to try to keep yourself calm if anything like this ever happens again, and and know that I'm going to get a hold of you just as soon as I can. Okay. I will. I can try to call her right now. Who? Debbie. Call who? You can if you want to. Well, I would only. Do that if you would like, because you're the one who's spending the dime on the call, yo. Yeah, but I don't want to interrupt it on her cruise either. I want her to have a good time. Although narcissists want to be in control, they never want to be responsible for their results. Unless, of course, everything goes exactly their way and their desired result occurs. When things don't go according to their plan, or they feel criticized or less than perfect, the narcissist places all that blame and responsibility on you. It has to be someone else's fault. Sometimes that blame is generalized. Everyone's out to get them. Most often, however, the narcissist blames one person who is the most emotionally close, most attached, loyal, and loving in their life. You. To maintain the facade of perfection, narcissists always have to blame someone or something else. You are the safest person to blame because you are the least likely to leave or reject them. Since narcissists are continually disappointed with the imperfect way life unfolds, they want to do as much as possible to control and mold it to their liking. They want and demand to be in control, and their sense of entitlement makes it seem logical to them that they should be in control of everything. Narcissists always have a storyline in mind about what each character in their interaction should be saying and doing. When you don't behave as expected, they become quite upset and unsettled. They don't know what to expect next because you're off script. They demand that you say and do exactly what they have in mind so they can reach their desired conclusion. You are a character in their internal play, not a real person with your own thoughts and feelings. This is why breaking up with a narcissist can be particularly tricky. Another core narcissist trait is the constant need for attention. Even just by following you around the house, asking you to find things, or constantly saying something to grab your attention. Validation for a narcissist counts only if it comes from others. Even then, it doesn't count for much. A narcissist's need for validation is like a funnel. You pour in positive supportive words and they just fly out the other end and are gone. No matter how much you tell narcissists you love them, admire them or approve of them, they never feel it's enough because deep down they don't believe anyone can love them. Despite all their self-absorbed, grandiose bragging, narcissists are actually very insecure and fearful of not measuring up. They constantly try to elicit praise and approval from others to shore up their fragile egos. But no matter how much they're given, they always want more. She's probably getting her toenails done. Probably. 
but you know, if she, if she wants All right, to talk, it's let you guys know. That's right, I okay. okay, okay. Carnival Cruise are going to help you. Can I help you, Carnival Cruise? Hello, Debbie Reynolds' cabin, please. That's Cabin 316. I'll connect you. Thank you, sir. I'm gonna put. You're gonna hear. Hello. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. Hey, Winnie. How are you? I'm good. I can't listen and talk at the same time because I'm putting the two phones together. So I have to put them together and stand back. So. When one of you have to make a yell or a whistly doodle or something, okay? Why are you, uh, what are you doing? I'm putting Emma's oh. Airbnb landline together with her cell phone so you can say hello to each other. It's a recorded line. FYI. Oh. Like, oh, okay. I guess Lauren's on the phone then. Yes. I just said hello, beautiful. Okay. Hi. How's it How going? Doing? I'm doing great. Doing all right. I just I just took a nap. I had I did a dog race this morning. Oh really? Did you? Win? Yeah. Of course I did. Cool. Awesome. Good job. Yeah. So I hear I hear you getting married. You hear I'm getting married. What? Yeah. There's some. Colombian guy named Duke that you're learning how to speak Spanish for. Superiority is the number one sign of a narcissist. This is different from self-confidence alone. The world of a narcissist is all about good, bad, superior, inferior, and right and wrong. There is a definite hierarchy with a narcissist at the top, which is the only place they feel safe. Narcissists have to be the best, the most right, and the most competent. Do everything their way, own everything, and control everyone. Interestingly enough, narcissists can also get that superior feeling by being the worst, the most wrong, or the most ill, upset, or injured. They feel entitled to receive soothing concern and recompense, and even the right to hurt you or demand apologies to make things even. This is called vulnerable or covert narcissism. I am learning to speak Spanish. It's really fun. I'm really, really bad at it, though. So don't ask. I heard you, heard you learning it for him. Okay. What else did you hear? I heard he asked you a question and you, you haven't answered him yet. He asked me a question. Okay. That he proposed what to question you. is that? Okay. I heard that he, pro I heard that he proposed to you. Okay, so what? So, so what's your answer? I don't have an answer. How long have you known him? A while. A while. You haven't known him very long. You've only known him since you've been down there. Down You're before. not going to try to give me a relationship therapy, are you? Seriously? Whatever. Whatever. Because you Whatever you, you said that you wanted to marry you said you wanted to marry Winnie and you you were never in the same room with her. So. Whatever. <laughs> hey, well, well, well. Not my fault. <laughs> not my fault. You never want to meet me. That's that's up to you, not me. I know it's up to me. So what's going on in there? Nothing. You said that you were going to get out on Thursday. On um, yeah, well. Hopefully, my detention hearing is on Thursday, so I'm going to try to get out for a little bit so I can get some things taken okay. care of, and then I'll have to go back oh, okay. from sentencing on the 3rd of September and getting people to send letters in to support me to, so I can make it easier for me to only serve six months instead of instead of a year, so they can give me six months or a year as my guideline. So, like, oh, so they've know, already decided that you're you're going to prison. Yeah, well, well, yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, I probably won't go to prison because if it's under a year, they don't send you to prison. They just send you to a jail or, or someplace like that. 
system. Okay, but they, the the judge already decided that that you're gonna have you're gonna have to serve time. Well, we already decided that when I went to court the last time, so I could just you know, skip the preliminary because uh, I I had already I had already failed the test and I had already admitted to drinking. So right. it's just a matter of Maria and Bryce are trying to hold the an axe up in my head, but now they're all freaking out because they're worried about me giving an interview to Chris Hansen. And they they shouldn't be worried about it. They don't want it in the media. And if they they piss me off, it'll it'll be in the media. And they they don't want I thought you already said that you weren't gonna talk to him. I'm not well, no, well, you haven't, you haven't been, had contact with me for a bit because you've been preoccupied learning Spanish, so. Yeah, with my own life, things. exactly. Yeah, with your, with your boyfriend. With my own life. Yeah, with your boyfriend. And I'm asking you about what's going on with you so that if I can help in any way or whatever, then I will. But you're not going to give me any fucking shit about living my own goddamn life. That's what you you're have not one gonna minute do. left. With your boyfriend. Okay, bye. We only have one minute left. <laughs> Come on over here. Come on over here. Take your off. Come on, Coward. No, no, no. Come on. You're not an intellectual. You're a fake and a fraud. You can spot a narcissist with an extremely high need for everything to be perfect. They believe they should be perfect, you should be perfect, events should happen exactly as expected, and life should play out precisely as they envision it. This is an excruciatingly impossible demand, which results in the narcissist feeling dissatisfied and miserable much of the time. The demand for perfection leads the narcissist to complain and be constantly dissatisfied. You wonder why that show got popular? That show got popular because... Because they were but, making money. No, that show got popular. I'm gonna tell you why that show got popular. That's, that show mm-hmm. got popular. That because, show, they're, because they're looking at they're looking at people uh, making themselves look like fools. Lauren, they want to dramatize the fucking show. Lauren, there is uh, there's nothing to dramatize. There were yeah. men. All right, uh, did you tell me that when when they started the show out in California, they were walking out and arrest the guy. When it came to the show of Bowling Green that I was in, they came out with fucking guns drawn on me, yelling, get on the ground. Lauren, because you committed a felony, and they did not know okay. what you had on you. They do. In California, they committed a felony. But they walked up to the person and handcuffed him. They didn't you know, fucking point the guns at him and yell at him, get on the ground. Lauren. They didn't it. Lauren. But they did it in mind. Lauren, whether they had guns drawn, whether they had super soakers, whether they held out their fingers in the, sh- in the shape of a gun, the fact of the matter is that you and other guys showed yeah. up there with the intention to do dr- detrimental harm to somebody. I and they put it on that. TV, but Lauren, you're you're defending against it by saying it shouldn't have been on TV. You know what? Yeah. And, and, I am defending it because because of the fact they did not need to put me on a fucking national television. Lauren, I didn't deserve that shit. I didn't ask for it. I wasn't in a dog camera looking for a kid. Lauren, they were the, they were the fucking ones that were predators. You can't say that Dateline destroyed a dream because they didn't destroy a dream. I don't know why you keep fucking hopping on Dateline. Because, because it's one of the they, things they, they, you... they did not have a right. Don't tell me they had a right. They did not have a right to put it on that. So nobody else in the fucking world Put it on national television. They only did it for rating. That's why they're not on the fucking TV right now. Lauren, why do you think people watch that show? Entertainment. Why do you think- it was entertainment to them. 
Why do you think people were well, entertained? They wanted to figure it out, so they fucking did as much as they could to get more rating. Okay, why do you think they people... was going out to watch for kids, watch out for kids. They had no fucking rating. It's okay, all well... about fucking money. Okay, why do you think people were entertained by the show? Mm, no fucking different than my fucking brother and sister. Okay, why do you think people were entertained by the show? Hello, everyone. Right now, I'm in my truck. I can't look straight at the camera. Well, I figured this is the best way to do it. So, the scenery out here. I'm going to put up a couple of these today. Different places to go. Yeah. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the computer up on the dash. Uh, so I was with your wife are going back and forth, man. So, I'll be irritating, but I got to get the windshield wiper so I can see what I'm doing. Do you fucking understand? God, if you hang up on me. Do you understand? Do you understand? Oh, you don't fucking understand, because you can't shut up. Do you understand that if you, you can't hang up listen to anything anybody has to say about you? We're through if you hang up on me. Do you understand? Do you understand that if you what? fucking keep talking to me the way you've been talking to me tonight, that we are fucking through. If you hang up on me one more time tonight, we're through. You still have not heard a fucking word I said because you, you can't stop talking. Do you understand? If you talk to me like you've been talking to me tonight, then we are going to be through. So I'm not you putting up with your fucking bullshit, pedophile talk, fucking wreck of fucking shit talk. Although they are highly attuned to perceiving threats, anger, and rejection from others, narcissists frequently misread subtle facial expressions and are typically biased towards interpreting facial expressions as negative. Unless you are acting out your emotions dramatically, the narcissist won't accurately perceive what you're feeling. Even saying I'm sorry or I love you when a narcissist is on edge and angry can backfire. They won't believe you and they may even perceive your comment as an attack. In addition, if your words and expressions aren't congruent, the narcissist will likely respond erroneously or get defensive. This is why narcissists often misinterpret sarcasm as an actual agreement or joking from others as a personal attack. The lack of ability to correctly read body language, a common narcissist trait, is one reason narcissists are deficiently empathetic to your feelings. They don't see them, they don't interpret them correctly, and overall, they don't believe you feel any differently than they do. You've probably made the mistake of trying to reason and use logic with the narcissist to get them to understand the painful effect their behaviors have on you. You think that if they understand how much their behavior hurt you, they'll change. Your explanations, however, don't make any sense to the narcissist, who only seem able to be aware of their own thoughts and feelings. Although narcissists may say they understand, they honestly don't. Therefore, narcissists make most of their decisions based on how they feel about something. They expect you to go along with their solutions, and they react with irritation and resentment if you don't. The narcissist's personality is split into good and bad parts, and they also split everything in their relationship into good and bad. Any negative thoughts or behaviors are blamed on you or others, whereas they take credit for everything that is positive and good. They deny their negative words and actions while continually accusing you of disapproving. They also remember things as completely good and wonderful or as bad and horrible. They can't seem to mix the two constructs. The Bloom Boy hoax occurred in 2009 when convicted sex offender Lorne Armstrong 
desperate for a cash grab, filled a gas balloon shaped to resemble. A silver flying saucer was released into the atmosphere above Maine with the help of arch nemesis X Derek. The authorities confirmed the balloon reached 7,000 feet during its 90 minute flight. The event attracted worldwide attention and Lauren was eventually thrown in jail again. On live television, X Derek, sick of Lauren's bullshit, told the world the dad said we did this for the show. Once again, a television show ruined Lauren Armstrong's dreams. He is now suing NBC, CNN, and Fox News for defamation. I'll sue you, you piece of shit! What you all see right there is an experimental aircraft that inside of which is a six-year-old boy who got into that aircraft not that long ago and accidentally launched it. It's hard to believe, but it is absolutely true. It's coming to us. Uh, this is the balloon. Uh, it is coming to us from KUSA. The chopper is taking pictures, and I believe this balloon, again, experimental with a six-year-old little boy whose parents have created this experimental balloon inside. It's about 10,000 feet up. That's the approximate height right now, traveling at pretty wicked speeds right there. Did you, uh, did you go past the nurse's station again? No, I'll go over there right now. When did these come? Uh, Around 8. 8 p.m.? How come you took so long to give them to me, fuckers? You were sleeping on me. Calm down. Okay. Dear Casey, I love you, Lauren. Oh, thank you, baby. <laughs> you welcome, baby. I love you. <laughs> I love you so much. I love you. That's so sweet. And it's a heart one. Ah. Uh, yeah, you crying, honey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Now your penis is bigger than Dan's, baby. <laughs> I love you. I love you. My too. penis. Oh, baby, don't cry, honey. Why did... Tell me why you chose these other two balloons, baby. Huh? Tell me why you did... You chose these other two balloons. Okay, but Emma did that for me. No, they, they are for me, baby. No. They are for me. I, yes, no, they are for me. I don't have a credit card that I can use to do that. So Emma did it for me. I asked, I asked Emma to do it for me. It makes it not Those special. are for me. <laughs> they are, baby, they are special. They are from me. I had to have Emma do it because that's the only way that I can do it. I don't have a credit card that I can do it with. Fuck these balloons, I put them Baby! Why would you do that? I thought it was from my husband and from my bitch friend. You both lied to me and conspiracied on me. Listen to me! You listen to me! You just popped balloons that were from me to throw a goddamn. Stop that bullshit. Those balloons were from me. I asked Emma to do it for me because I don't have a credit card that I can do it with. Those balloons are from me. Then why did you pay? Just pop them. How much did it cost? You threw a tantrum. You threw a tantrum and you popped them balloons. How much did it cost? Don't ever do that shit again. How, how much did it cost? No, I'm mad and I'm hurt. How, how much did it cost if you sent them? The bill is right here. She didn't tell me yet. Oh, yeah. She didn't all tell right. me yet. All right, all right. 
I, I was sleeping. So you didn't even know anything about it, did you? Does it fucking matter? It was from me. Yeah, it matters. Now, I'm hurt because you pop balloons that were from me because I, I have to pay him a bag for them. You need to stop the goddamn tantrums. That's bullshit. You pop balloons that were from me. I have to pay for them. That's bullshit. You didn't tell Emma nothing. It does not matter. You're mad for nothing. You don't pop balloons that are sent to you. What? To send a voicemail, oh. press two. What? Why did you hang up on me? You didn't buy nothing. I have to pay for them. No. Yeah, I have to pay him a back for them. To go through somebody else to be able to do this stuff. I don't have your address because you don't give it to me. You never even asked for it, you piece of shit. Um, you guys said that um, we did this for the show. Yeah. No. You didn't, um, come out? No. Um, I, I heard what he said, but I'm sure not, I'm not, it wasn't really, really clear. What was his... I'm gonna kill you! Like, did you piss me off? Why is it that whenever you fuck up, whenever you act like this, fucking shut the fuck up! Whenever you act like a little fucking bitch, you fucking dodge responsibility and try to turn it around on somebody. What you won't admit is that you're a fucking loser. Nobody loves you. Nobody can. You're selfish and ugly and stupid and foolish and irresponsible. How could you ever have thought that I was ever serious about you? Nobody will be, ever, unless they're fucking retarded. Stupid fuck. You might... Ugh. Yeah, hang up, Lauren. Go ahead and fucking hang up, because you know what? You're a fucking coward, and you can't see life for what it is. Whenever somebody pulls the fucking sheets off and throws... The closet door is open and reveals what you really are and what you're going to be forever. You just cover it up with a lie and then you say it to yourself over and over again so you can believe it. You don't fucking treat me like that. You don't fucking yell at me like that. And you don't fucking try to control me, bitch. Because you know what will happen? I'll show you who's in fucking control. And it's not you. So fuck on. Deeply repressed shame. Narcissists don't feel much guilt because they think they're always right, and they don't believe their behaviors really affect anyone else. But they harbor a lot of shame. Shame is the belief that there is something deeply and permanently wrong or bad about who you are. Buried in a deeply repressed part of a narcissist are all the insecurities, fears, and rejected traits that they're constantly on guard to hide from everyone including themselves. The narcissist is acutely ashamed of all these rejected thoughts and feelings. Keeping their vulnerabilities hidden is essential to the narcissist's pretend self-esteem or false self. Ultimately, however, this makes it impossible for them to be completely real and transparent. Why do you keep pressing me on this stuff? Because you're not taking responsibility. People I'm were taking responsibility for what I've done. People were entertained. I don't deserve a lifetime of fucking hell for what I did. <sighs> Warren, you're not taking responsibility I'm for not a bad. I'm not a bad person. Well, I didn't use those words. Those if, are I'm words. A, if I'm a bad person, then why do you still want me? Lauren, I did not use those words. You're the one who said that. 
I am just saying that you could do well to take responsibility. I take this responsibility for what I did. This I'm not going to take responsibility for what NBC did. Okay, Lauren, this whole thing would be easier on you if you took responsibility. Stop blaming Dateline, stop blaming NBC, and take responsibility. Why do you keep misunderstanding me? I take responsibility for everything I said and everything I did. Well, you can't really when you say the chat was doctored. You don't, when you say the chat was doctored. It was, because I could fucking point out shit in it that was doctored. I know shit in it that I was fucking doctored. I know it when I was in the jail and fucking went to bed for the first time. So... And I pointed out to, to the guys in the fucking... in the cell with me. I know I, I know some shit that was fucked up on that... then the, the fucking... The federal investigator came in talking to me. I'm a lawyer, but the federal investigator that that works for my federal lawyer asked me if I want to see the DVDs. I said, yeah. He never brought them in for me to see. I didn't get to see them until I had already pleaded guilty and put a motion to the court to get the DVDs. When I got them, they were edited. Lauren. Shit about the, about the fucking system you don't know. Lauren. You know what? If you were someone who was being tried and convicted for, let's say, I don't know, killing your neighbor, and they had no fingerprints, they had no blood evidence, no DNA, none whatsoever, no reason to believe that you had done it besides the fact that you live next door, then that would be outrageous. And I would be outraged if that happened to anybody because that's just ridiculous. But when you get hey, yes. I know what you're saying already, and I want you to listen to me. I know what I did wrong, but I am pissed off about the shit that NBC purposely did wrong. That's what I'm telling you. And the, the fucking, the fucking so-called duck system down there, the police did wrong because they were fucking paid by NBC. Giving computers and cameras and shit like that. And that's not just coming from me, it's coming from the sheriff the original sheriff that actually arrested me because he's the same one that fucking took me to the rotary farm in the van and him and me talk. And he said he was he was sorry that he was ever fucking even involved in that show. He said he wished he had never been involved in it. That's what I'm telling you. Okay. Now. I know what I did wrong. But, Lauren, it is disturbing when you continue to say that you shouldn't have been on TV and it shouldn't have been this way no, and it shouldn't it have been that have. way. Lauren, it, it should have been. It should been on fucking television. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm making this video because I told everyone that I would find places where I said no in the conversation and I found the first place but I haven't read through the conversation since I was in jail or actually in the first prison that I was in and after I found the first place where I was saying no, I couldn't go any further because I was disgusted by the conversation. It's actually not quite so much Chris Hansen that I don't like. It's perverted justice that I don't like because I know what they do and I know what, why they do it, but they don't do it for the, for the right reasons. They don't have... That stand, the, the, those people in particular should not be doing that. There should only be law enforcement officers doing that. That's a vigilante group. They should not be doing it. Well, they, they what, didn't arrest. What they do, yeah, but they do it the wrong way. They, they lure guys in that wouldn't normally do this stuff. 
okay, well, wait a minute. We're going to stop right there because if you look at your own situation with Kayla, she didn't lure you to do anything. I know that was all, that was all me because of my frame of mind that I was in, but I, I never well, would have done your anything frame, like that the frame of my, The frame of mind that you were in was that you were attracted to a 13 year old girl and you wanted to go over and fuck her. We talked about this before. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's and me. like that's... I said, like I said, I'm not going to let you go backwards. So don't let anybody right think that I don't know what I did wrong. Cause I do. I'm very ashamed of the way I talked and the things I did. And for those of you that wonder what I was fighting for, uh, I was fighting because I didn't have a lawyer that fought for me. And it's not that I didn't think that I should, should not have spent time incarcerated for what I did. I, my sentence was not what it should have been. And I was fighting for all the, the legal aspects of the way things happened and should not have happened. For one, NBC never should have been there. The media, it's illegal for the media to be there. But they're, they not, they're not right. On, they are not right on everything that they do. What is it that they do that they're wrong about? They, they go extra lengths to try to get guys to the house. Like what extra lengths were there? Well, you, if, you tell, if you tell them no, they just... They keep chatting. When they did keep you going. say no? There's a few times in there that I said, no, you didn't read that? Oh, okay. I'll go back and, and we can look at it together. Oh, I never I, I never saw you say thing. no. Well, we're going to because you're you're basically exonerating yourself. And you're saying that know. they, wait a minute. And you're saying that they were the ones that kept pressing you. So I will be more than happy to look at the chat, and we're going to go through it together. I, oh, God, I went through it with Winnie. <laughs> Did you go through, you went through the whole thing with her? No, not the whole thing. I had enough. I, I couldn't stand it anymore. Okay. Well, I mean, I, you know, I don't need to sit there and read all, you know, 400 pages or whatever there were. Mm -hmm. It was a really fucking long. Oh. And well, quite, it, frankly, it wasn't, Lauren, it wasn't... quite frankly, Lauren, quite frankly, Lauren, it was fucking boring as shit. Like <laughs> if you were if you were talking to a woman, so lame. I would have been out of there in two <laughs> seconds. Like, are you uh, anxious to touch my penis? I'd be like, you. Okay, I don't need a recap shove it on that. Fucking ass because it's so <laughs> stupid. So, but we're we're gonna look at this because you well, have no, it. Wait what a I'm minute. saying Shut is, up. for those of you that want to make poke fun at why I hesitate when I talk you don't like it it's pretty simple don't listen to it and, and I mean obviously there's something about it that you must like because you're listening to it over and over and over again and it's if you don't like the way somebody talks don't listen to it it's pretty basic I think well except for those of you that are thick-headed but and if you don't like what I'm saying right now, oh well, get over it. And I guess that's about all I have to say for now. To all of you that are supporting me, I really appreciate it, and I will continue to do the best that I can to keep uh, all of you that are supporting me proud. To make every one of you proud that are supporting me, I really appreciate your support. So you <laughs> have it in your mind. That you said no, and I want to find where you said no. Because if you I did, told her I told right off straight that I would go to jail for it. Yeah, but that's not saying no. I, I said no. I said no. I would go. To, I, I'm quite sure I said no. I okay, could wind well, up we'll in jail for it. it. We'll find it. And I think I said it more than once. I think. Quite I sure. don't think you did. I don't think you did. I highly doubt it because all of it was, I love you, my precious little princess. Here's my dick. Do you want okay, to see it again before I, I, I go don't need to bed? a recap. So you're going to get a fucking recap if I want you to hear Stop one. Stop yelling. 
Stop yelling. You're going to hear it if I want you to hear it. I told you that I'm going to look at the chat and I'm going to find where you said no. Got it? Stop yelling, though. You don't need to yell at me. Well, you <laughs> need to shut the fuck up when I'm talking to you. Well, I hear your voice when you talk. And you don't stutter. need to yell. At me. You don't need to stutter <laughs> and try I'll, to interrupt me. It. You need to stop it all. making excuses. <laughs> stop making excuses. I'm not making excuses. You are too. You're saying that they were there for the wrong reason. That they were luring you in. They were there. They were there for money. They were doing that shit for money. They got a hundred thousand dollars per show. Big fucking deal. That, that's a that's a lot of incentive. You know what? They deserved it for having to look at your cock for a fucking month. They had to put a lot of work in, a lot of work, a lot of hours to sit there and talk to you. And that's just one person. Okay, so now that this thing is done, why is it that they need to keep pressing it? If you have a problem with them directly for whatever's happening after the fact, go right ahead and do whatever you need to do. Okay, well, the, this is the thing. The, see, one letter that I got, it wasn't just one letter. The, the, there were several different letters. And I know goddamn well it was from Xavier Von Erd. One got sent to me. One got sent to my brother Roy. One to my brother Paul. And one to my mother. That's pretty fucking sick. These are some sick-ass fucking people on the internet. Mm -hmm. Some of the members of, of Perverted Justice, they're not there for innocent reasons. But, okay, so, so for, but... For but me wait to protect every, every member of perverted justice, I won't Wh do that. How would you be protecting anybody? For the ones that were there for the actual reasons, yeah, I would, I would protect them. But, but I know Xavier Von Eck is not one of them. He's the co-founder of the fucking thing. Okay, but what does that have to do with anything about what you got caught with? Just it's Because it's 12 years later, Xavier Von Eck did his fucking job a long time ago. He needs to leave people alone. He's been sued so many times because he keeps harassing people. Okay, well, and not, not just people, they're family members too. Okay, well, I'm not know, the first. I don't know anything about that, and quite frankly, I don't really care. I mean, if you need help with something after the fact, that's a separate item. It I care nothing, because it's my it mom nothing, that's looking it that has nothing a letter to do with Thankfully, what I happened interrupted to you. To get involved with what you got involved with. I know. I, I'm not. to do. It has nothing I'm to saying, do with it. I know that I, that I was wrong. What I did was wrong. Right. I'm not, I'm not trying to defend myself on that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pissed off as hell because these fucks don't stop their, their letter writing and all this bullshit. Any way that they can possibly get a hold of me to get me to call them and all this shit. And to send a, a fucking letter to my mom really pissed me right off. Okay. That went to the state police. Good. They what did, are they doing about all it? All that information. They're, all they're still investigating. They're, every letter I bring in makes them do the investigating more. Thankfully, the letters have slowed down since the lawyer. Since I had the well, lawyer write the letter. Well, that's good. It's good. I still got that one letter. Somebody's still trying to fucking get me to call them like a bunch of fucking idiots. Do you see why I fucking break down and stop fucking crying? Because I'm so fucking tired of this shit. I understand. I don't want these. I don't want these fucks contacting me. I understand. Well, here's here's what I think. Um, I think that when you were on the show, obviously you were shocked and you didn't know what to say and you were kind of in a panic. So yeah, yeah, I get uh, that, you, that you wouldn't have come off that well. You wouldn't have been able to really think about how to respond to his questions. <laughs> you just wanted to get out of there. I bet. Yeah. yeah and, yeah. and so, um, you know, and then after the fact you went to prison, you were gone for a while. Um, and then when you came back, eventually you went on the internet and you, you created your own channel, which was a good idea because then, you know, you can kind of show like, this is who I am. This is what I do. Um, 
but the people the who were of me explaining a, explaining shit that fucking you know, fucked me all up. It really did. It really did because I would have to say that everyone knows the answer to the question of why did you go there, and well, you that, fabricated yeah, this whole was, story. But that's not what I was thinking when they put out the question of why did I go there. Because all I could think was I did, I just couldn't fucking think straight at the time. I think what you were trying to do in answering that question was to try to minimize what happened. And yeah, again, and try to separate yourself from everyone else who showed up there. Like, oh, no, 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 I, I'm not, that's not me. I'm not that guy. And, you know, the fact is we, we know that you, you were that guy. You were a predator. You were a monster. You were someone to be afraid of. Yeah, it's fucked up. It's really fucked up. And it's so scary because then it makes you think, okay, kids have their computers in their rooms. And, like, when you were talking to Kayla, you're like, get your dad to put a lock on your door so they don't come in. Yeah, I know. It just showed you how fucked, you know, people can be, especially when they go on the internet and they think they can get away with anything. They think that no one's ever going to find out. And this is what happens. Yeah. So so I can't speak for... Yeah, exactly. And I can't speak for... Every group, I, I don't know these people personally. I just know your situation. And I know that if they had fucked around, if they had, you know, told you that she's 18 years old and then you showed up to the house and she says that she's 13 and the cops run out and you get arrested, that's a different story. Yeah, I know. That, you know, so the she's reason why. She's 13. Right. And the reason why they go about things the way that they do is to make sure that when you go to court, there's no question there. They can see that all of the words came from you and she just was saying, okay, that's it. She wasn't suggesting anything. She wasn't, you know, there, there wasn't anything there. So it, it makes me really upset. It makes me really upset, Lauren, when you again try to push it off on something try to take away a little bit of the responsibility and put it somewhere else and say well they tried to lure me i said no and the reality is you never did and i will go I'm through that gonna, chat i'm going to go through the say, entire go through thing through that chat the I reality will. is I, I know i did yeah okay great then i'm going to find it anyway it just, it makes me really upset. And, the, and that's why I start yelling. And that's why I get mad because Lauren, it's like, and this is the problem. This is the problem that you had originally when you're basically talking about, um, you're talking about, okay, I'm going to tell everybody how I got caught up in the sting. And then you go into this long drawn out story about your brothers and your sister and how you gave them money. They didn't give anything back to you. I think there was food that was supposed to be exchanged. And that never happened. And then you ended up in Nashville. And you were so disgusted by your family that, you know, it put you in a bad state of mind. And therefore, had that not happened, you wouldn't have been in Nashville. You never would have been on the internet. And you would have lived happily ever after. And that's just not true. Well, I've never met anybody who lived happily ever after. Well, we're not talking about any anyone. We're talking about you. And again, I'm not talking literally. I'm just saying, you know, you wouldn't have gone to prison for this had it never happened. And so, you know, I think that that's where people get infuriated. That's why so many accounts were made making fun of you. I would have to be willing to bet that the people who are subscribed to your channel are laughing. Like, look at this fucking clown. Like, he's actually thinking that we give a shit about his singing, that we give a shit about anything he has to say beyond the truth. 
He's going to give us this sad story about his family didn't make him some food because he gave them money. And so then he all of a sudden is, you know, talking to a kid. And that never would have happened if they didn't do what they did. So as you can see, everyone, it's not my fault. And that's what you were trying to do. You're just trying to garner sympathy from people. And there isn't a single person except for other people in your position who really are going to be sympathetic to that. I never would have been sympathetic with it either. So perverted justice, you can think whatever you want. The reality is in your situation, they logged into that chat room and they sat there and you came to them and then you stayed there. So you may have mentioned, you may have mentioned, yeah, you may have mentioned I can go to jail, which would make sense. Because you knew that. You knew what you were doing, you know, was illegal. Yeah, but for some reason, I f- still fucking stayed there. And I, I, I'm mad at myself for for not understanding why I stayed there. But when you know I knew why it, you when stayed I knew there. It was wrong. I know, but I knew, I knew it was wrong. And I, and I knew I didn't want to do it. And I still did it. Lauren, I swear to Christ. Don't get frustrated with me. I'm getting I'm, frustrated I'm, with you because you did it again. I'm frustrated with I'm frustrated with myself because because I knew it was wrong, and I know I didn't want to go there, but I still went there. Don't say I didn't want to go there. That is the problem. You wanted to go there, Lorne. I didn't want to be that guy. You were there. that guy, so you have to acknowledge it. Narcissists have very little ability to empathize with others. This lack of empathy is a hallmark sign of narcissism. Narcissists tend to be selfish and self-involved and are usually unable to understand what other people are feeling. They expect others to think and feel the same as they do and seldom give any thought to how others feel. They are rarely apologetic, remorseful, or guilty. Some narcissists also lack an understanding of the nature of feelings. They don't understand how their feelings occur. They think their feelings are caused by someone or something outside themselves. They don't realize that their feelings are caused by their own biochemistry, thoughts, and interpretations. In a nutshell, narcissists always think you cause their feelings, especially the negative ones. They conclude that because you didn't follow their plan or because you made them feel vulnerable, you are to blame. This lack of empathy makes true emotional connection and relationships with narcissists difficult or impossible. Fear of rejection and ridicule. The narcissist's entire life is motivated and energized by fear. You wouldn't initially pick this out as a sign of a narcissist, though, because most narcissist fears are deeply buried and repressed. They're constantly afraid of being ridiculed, rejected, or wrong. They may have fears about germs, about losing all their money, about being emotionally or physically attacked, about being seen as bad or inadequate, or about being abandoned. This makes it difficult and sometimes impossible for the narcissist to trust anyone else. In fact, the closer your relationship becomes, the less they'll trust you. Narcissists fear any true intimacy or vulnerability because they're afraid you'll see their imperfections and judge or reject them. No amount of reassurance seems to make a difference because narcissists deeply hate and reject their own shameful imperfections. Narcissists never seem to develop trust in the love of others, and they continually test you with the worst and worst behaviors to try to find your breaking point. Their gripping fear of being found out or abandoned never seems to dissipate. Anxiety. Anxiety is an ongoing, vague feeling that something bad is happening or about to happen. Some narcissists show their anxiety by talking constantly about the doom that's about to happen while some hide and repress their anxiety. But most narcissists project their anxiety onto their closest loved ones, accusing them of being negative, unsupportive, mentally ill, not putting them first, 
not responding to their needs or being selfish. All this is designed to transfer anxiety to the loved one in an attempt to not feel it themselves. As you feel worse and worse, the narcissist feels better and better. In fact, they feel stronger and more superior as you feel your anxiety and depression grow. Damn hot, yeah, you're ugly, yeah, so what? It's not all that matters. Um, I'm ugly to you, you don't want, like, fucking want me anyway, because I know I'm not ugly, so I'll be goddamn fucking be told all my life that I'm fucking ugly, but I know I'm not. <laughs> Who told you that you weren't ugly, though, honey? Come on. Let's Everybody evaluate tells the me relationship I'm ugly. there. No, I'm not talking about the female family members you have trying to reassure you. It... Not family members. I have never had anybody tell me that I'm ugly until you. Maybe you need glasses. That's your way of fucking trying to belittle me to make me feel like I'm less. It doesn't work. I'm not trying to belittle you. That might work with some people, but it doesn't work with me. Well, obviously, it bothers you because you bring it up a lot. So, if it doesn't bother you, then don't even worry about it. It bothers me because I fell in love with you. But then all of a sudden, you start this, you're ugly bullshit. And then call me a pedal bullshit. Trying to tease me with other fucking guys, bullshit. You didn't do that when we first fucking met. Or yeah, even for a long time after that. That's been in the last two or three months you've done that. And I've dealt with it. No, no, even when yeah. I was Casey, I was yeah. calling you fat, ugly bitch. Stop no, fighting. You no, you weren't. No, you yes, weren't. Yes, I was. Yeah, no, you, you were you no, fat, you and I was making fun of you, and I was making you take a picture of your shirt. So I could see your fat tummy and then make you skinny. You're not getting skinny though. I'm getting the way I want to fucking, however I want to fucking be. So? But I know I'm not fat. And I know goddamn well I'm not ugly. I don't know who's lying to you, baby. But looks don't even matter. It doesn't matter that you're ugly. I love you for what you are inside. Uh, you might think people are lying to me, but you're the only one that I've ever had tell me that I'm ugly. Lauren, look at your RSO photo and be completely honest with yourself. Yep. What about it? You have a tooth that's back backwards and it was shoved in sideways. No, I have a tooth that I got a chip. And the fucking prison dentist fucking screwed it up. That's cosmetic. I can get that fucking fix. That doesn't bother me. I don't give a well, fuck. Well, you about could that. have, but you I didn't. I get a fix when but... I get a chance to get a fix. All right. The color of your eyes is beautiful, but the shape of them is mongoloid. Uh, <laughs> shape of my eyes. It's oh. wrong with the shape of my eyes. No, I didn't say there was something wrong with it. I was just giving you a description, that mongoloid. And it, 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 it doesn't matter anyway, what description you give them. I still have those looking eyes. It does not matter, is what I'm saying. If it bothers you, I'm sad. If it doesn't bother you, that's great. But you never consider other people. What if somebody doesn't want to look at the corn nuts in your mouth as you talk? It's kind of gross. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what other people think. I don't, I'm not ugly, well, so I don't have to worry about it. Well, if you didn't give a fuck what people thought, then you wouldn't be so sensitive to my opinion on your looks. Well, with you, it's different, because I, I fell in love with you. But the problem is, you keep fucking pouring on shit to make me jealous and tease me and all this shit about other fucking guys. I'm not fucking dealing with that shit. You don't love me, love me Nobody right is teasing you. Okay. Nobody is no teasing bullshit. you. Nobody oh, is teasing oh, you. Oh, Dan. Oh, Dan. Oh, Dan. You look so nice today. Oh, Dan. What are you, what are you Well, he did. Today? He looked great today. 
Maybe, you know what, Lord? Well, you, you, you Maybe there's... Dad look great. Maybe so there's nobody that. around to remind Dan that he thing. is... Dan is so sexy. I never say that. I don't say you sexy. Oh, bullshit. Fucking I don't. Fucking right now. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. I don't call him yeah, sexy. You yeah, you do. Look, I want to make Dan feel good. I've seen what his girlfriend looks like, and I see that he might have a low self-esteem, so I'm just trying to help him. Well, look, Emma's my best friend, too. Well, I don't care. I don't think Emma is ugly. I don't think Emma is ugly. How do you tease and bullshit? How do you fucking talk about Dan all the time? About stalking Dan. That's fucking going beyond. This Google Earth bullshit is fucking exactly what I just said. Bullshit. I think you're bullshit. Oh, well. It's not about saying no. She never it's asked. It's all about anything. saying no. Even my she fucking counselors, all three counselors that I've had, and my psychologist said that I couldn't say no. That's why I got you so bad by my family, because I couldn't say the word fucking no. You can't say no to a little baby. I couldn't say no to anything at the time. She was never asking you for anything. You were begging her for everything. She never...